I do think a little bit more professionalism will go a long way. That's even like the sprint car people don't even understand that, right? Because they all like, they leave every night. Like, Ladies and gentlemen, you wanted it, you got it. The place for the untold, real, raw, and juicy stories of dirt track racing. It's Dirt Track Confessions. And now here's your host, Mandy Kaltzmahaney. Welcome to Dirt Track Confessions. I'm your host, Mandy Patch Mahaney, and I am extremely ecstatic to be welcoming on our guest, Jacqueline Rumley. Jacqueline, how are you? I am good. I'm good. I am busy, but I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad, thank you for inviting me on here. I can always make time for things. It's just oh. moving stuff around, you know? Absolutely. Well, I, I really appreciate it. So um, I guess quick backstory, Jacqueline and I met at a bar. <laughs> I mean, everyone that knows me will, will, will think that was a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> Every good story starts with at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we met years, it seems like forever ago, but at this point, but um, I, she, Jeff, like world finals, like, I don't know, 2013, 14 or yeah. something. Okay, it's, been 10 so years. it's been at least 10 years. Yeah. yeah. So. I always love seeing everything that Jacqueline does and you know, you do a lot girlfriend, you do a lot. So I'm not even going to like explain it. If you can like just bridge the gap for us from like where you started in Canada at the races to where you are now living the life that you live. Like, yeah. how did you end up here? Uh, I mean, it was not linear and it was not planned. Well, I mean, it was planned to move here, but where I've ended up has not been part of my plan. Um, so. <laughs> Long, like, so I started, um, I, I was always around a racetrack as a kid. Like I was born in March and I think I was at the racetrack in May. Cause that's, you know, when the season starts up there, mm -hmm. uh, my parents were involved just more like helping the track. And my dad would just be like a mechanic helping somebody. Um, and then years later, my mom bought my dad a race car, um, as like an anniversary. Okay. I think it was our 25th wedding anniversary or 20th, something like that. Um, but he, like, he never wanted to race. So he just basically the friend that he would help kind of, he bought a car for him to race. Um, so I grew up around South Buxton Raceway, which is a uh, three eighths mile. I think they've refigured it, but I think it's reconfigured it. I think it's still three eighths, um, about an hour from Detroit, like three hours from Toronto. So closer to Michigan and Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, it's the only track I think to this day, still in, at least in Southwestern Ontario area that runs supers on a regular basis. Um, and they did back then too. So that was before crates really were a thing. But anyway, my parents, um, because of this, race car that they now have. Uh, they wanted to race other places other than just South Buxton. Um, so my mom kind of created the series where they traveled um, to, it's like a micro series. It was six to eight races a year um, to different tracks throughout Ontario and some in, in the States, um, just as uh, something to do for something different for the competitors that race at Buxton. Um, so I was like a teenager around the time. So I kind of got involved with, well, I don't know if I got, had a choice, but I got to help my mom with all the marketing and hospitality and, and everything that goes with it. Me and my sister, um, kind of were involved in that. And I never really wanted to work in racing necessarily. I always wanted to be like with animals. I love animals. And then I got a job in high school working at a vet clinic and I realized that was not for me. <laughs> so I always tell anybody before you like go to college for four years or whatever, try it out first, see, make sure you like it. Cause I'm glad I did. So then the second thing I liked was racing. So I had known about um, this program in North Carolina. Um, it was a more motor, sports management associate degree program because my sister had looked into it at one point. Um, she's a little older than me. She had looked into it. We actually came down for a tour at one point uh, because we would come down here on vacation to go to the NASCAR races every October. And um, basically my sister like, nah, I don't want to move that far. And it just never worked out. So then I was like, well, I'll do it. Um, so I applied and I started um, college as, as soon as I finished high school. But um, because of living in Canada, it was like I had to do a bunch of student visas and save up a lot of money. Um, so I stayed home and did schooling from home online um, while I worked for like a year and a half. And then I moved to North Carolina in 2007. So then that's kind of how I got to North Carolina. <laughs> um, and then I finished my degree. I, um, I did in-person classes for like a year because there's some classes that you have to take in person, like um, fabrication, like you can't learn that online, right? Um, mm -hmm. How to make a crush panel and stuff like that. Um, cause it's cool. Cause the program was like, um, it's focused both on, cause like right now and there's, it's more popular. There's other motorsports programs out there, but this one's the only one who teaches both like the business side and the technical side. So it's, you kind of come out like a little well-rounded. Not that I really wanted to work on cars, but I think it's important to know about 
the different parts and how things work, right? Um, that helps you have a knowledge and depending on whatever you want to do in the industry. So I thought I would probably get into motorsports and marketing or something like that. Um, after graduation, I got a job working for racing electronics, just as kind of like a salesperson. If you go to the NASCAR races and see all the trailers out front, I would like sell and rent radios to people, but it was cool. Cause I was 21 and got to go to almost every NASCAR race that year for free. Right. I got paid to go. So I'm like, I was in my glory. I got to go to a bunch of cool places. And um, when they would send us like out West, they would just kind of leave us out there. Cause it'd be cheaper than flying us back and forth. So I got to go see a lot and I'd never heard of a lot of these places. I went, and I remember we went to um, Napa Valley, um, like the wineries and to Alcatraz. And I'm like, I don't even know. I've never even heard of these places. People are like, didn't you see that one movie? I'm like, mm, no, like it was in Canada in our own little world up there. Like, I didn't know any of this stuff. Like, I don't know. <laughs> So looking back, I'm like, I got to go to some cool places. Like, I kind of want to go back to Napa Valley because I can actually appreciate it now. I didn't even like wine at the time. So I was just like, oh, this is cool. But like people pay a lot of money to go to those trips. Um, so I did that for a year, went to renew my work visa and found out the hard way that I couldn't. <laughs> There's a lot probably that I wish I had known, but at the same time, I wouldn't have ended up where I am. Um, so I went back to school. I had to basically to work in the United States. You have to have either a four-year degree or four years per degree per year of education to for like a work experience. So basically I need to prove I had like 16 years work experience, which I was 21. So <laughs> can't really do that. Um, so I went back to school for two more years, got my bachelor's degree, um, worked some jobs in between because um, I really couldn't work. So probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> some cash jobs, just a little bit, just to help. Um, because when you're on a student visa, you're not allowed to work. Um, so then after that is when I got the job at JKS Motorsports. Um, and I was there for seven years or so. Um, and that's like a events promotions marketing company. So basically like marketing companies will come to JKS, be like, okay, hey, we're gonna, we wanna build this event display. We need staff, we need you to build trophies and, and signage and show cars. And that's basically what JKS does. So I was the executive assistant there. So I did a lot of um, like invoicing project management, stuff like that. Um, and in the meantime is when I went back to school to get my MBA. So in the meantime here, I met Kevin and we got married and I was working a nine to five and he was gone racing all the time. So he would, and he, that's when he had a day job too. So he would work all day and then go to the shop at night and I would just be sitting here. So I'm like, I might as well go back to school. Like I'm not doing anything. I'm bored. I, I like school. I'm kind of nerdy like that. So I'm back to school to get my MBA. Um, plus at this point now I can get in-state tuition rates because I got married. Um, so basically my, my MBA ended up being cheaper than my associate degree just because of, I, cause I couldn't work. So I had all these living expenses. So basically my, my associate degree was also my rent, my, my, my insurance, everything food plus, um, um, exchange rate. So I had to pay my student loans were in Canadian. So it's like, I would exchange 5,000 Canadian and get like 2,500 us. Right. Uh, yeah. So in retrospect, I maybe could have stayed up there and did school then moved, but then I wouldn't have had the networking opportunities and, and been mm -hmm. so like in the industry. Right. So it's like, it's all retrospect. Um, where was I? Um, so then in 2019, a uh, job opportunity came up in the motorsports program that I graduated from. Um, never thought I would be a teacher, never really wanted to be a teacher. Um, but the people that were in the program when I was in it were very helpful, big mentors. Um, and the person who actually started the program passed away suddenly in 2014. Um, so I kind of looked at it as like, maybe I can help kind of continue it for him, um, be a mentor to these students. Cause like the teaching is like, I, I enjoy it, but I really enjoy the mentoring more. Um, I like it when students are like engaged and they're like, okay, I know I want to do this, or I don't really know what I want to do. Help me figure it out. I'm like, okay, like let's, let's do that. Let there's the industry's huge down here in North Carolina and beyond. Um, I have a lot of that. I have a lot of contacts. Kevin has a lot of contacts. My boss has a lot of contacts and then just past, um, students and like the, the network is huge. There's probably been hundreds of people through this program over the years and they're scattered everywhere. Um, and it's hard to keep record, keep and keep track of it. But when I do run into somebody, they're like, Oh, I did that program too. Let me know if you need anything. So it's cool to be able to connect the students because like, I try telling them like the, in to the outside world, they think racing jobs. Okay. A crew chief driver, maybe a PR person, but there's so much more to the industry. Um, so like options are endless if they, depending on what they want to do, like they, you can go to, you can be a physical therapist at a race team. Like, well, almost all of them have one in house. It just kind of depends on what the students want to do. So it's fun for me to help them figure out what they want to do. Is that a good 
summary. Yeah. Oh my God. So that is what she does now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, that's what for you when you were telling me that earlier, it's like you went from here and it, it was just like up and down, up and down, went back home, yeah. came back, met Kevin, married Kevin. Yeah. Here you are. You know, yeah, like, so yeah, that's like the yeah the professional side of things. That's my career, and then I still have like the Kevin side of things where I now get to travel. Like I grew up at very small dirt tracks. Like I I really didn't even know who like big name dirt track people were because my life was Buxton, like Oshwegan, maybe going over to like Little Valley or Crystal, Michigan. Like I only knew like the very like local guys, right, or regional, I should say. So like to if like twenty year old me knew that I was like walking around with like these famous dirt lane metal people if we, in our world, right? I would have been like, wow, I never would have saw that coming. But it was just a very organic too, like, cause Kevin kind of like, just let me kind of start hanging out, go to the races cause he knew I liked it. Next thing I know we get married. So, <laughs> so then, and then like, okay, then I kind of start taking over the merchandise cause they never really did any. And I'm like, this is fun for me. And I started doing the merchandise when I was doing my MBA. So it kind of like helped pay for that. Kevin was like, here, like, you can use my name. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so it kind of helped fund that. Uh, but it's like, I never have had any graphic experience or anything like that. And I've kind of taught myself how to do graphics. Um, and I joke, I've kind of turned into my mother because we all kind of do, right? Because um, yeah. I... <laughs> so <laughs> I grew up working in my mom's little embroidery shop in our basement in the summers, basically until I made enough money to buy whatever I wanted to buy that year. And then I'd quit. <laughs> like if I wanted to bike, I would work like a month until I had made enough. And then I'd be like, oh. but anyway, so I make merchandise for people. I don't have an embroidery machine. I'm, I refuse because then I would really be my mother. But I make merchandise and design apparel, I have heat presses, all this kind of stuff. Um, and my mom's also a college teacher too. So oh my <laughs> literally, God. yeah, literally my mother. So yeah, I do like the, I, I did Longhorns apparel for, I guess, five or six years with Miranda Labonte. I kind of did like uh, most of the books and, and the designs, and then she would do a lot of the uh, inventory and fulfillment. And it was a good team. Um, but then when Longhorn got bought out, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we, they, they outsourced it and allowed me to kind of focus on some other stuff too. So, so yeah, like, the the side hustle stuff it keeps me is just as busy too but it's it's okay because like i get my summer off so i i feel like i have a pretty good balance where i can focus on work when i need to and then my side hustle stuff it's not the priority because obviously work is but um it's yeah. fun and keeps me busy especially when i have a lot of downtime say in the summer or my winter break and that kind of thing so with your i mean you're in kevin's car like how how many races do you go a year? i've only missed one race since um, since 2020. Um, before that is when I had my regular job and I was lucky to go to half of them. If that, um, I would like try, I would like beg to get off work on a Friday and then like, I would leave Thursday night and drive up, even though he probably left Thursday morning, like say Eldora, for example, Eldora would be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I couldn't get off work Thursday. So, but I would like beg to get Friday off. So I would, he would leave Wednesday night or Thursday morning and I would leave as soon as I could Thursday after work and drive up. I'm just like hardcore like that, like like eight hours, even though I just missed my ride eight hours before that. <laughs> now I try to go to all of them. We don't race as much as he did back then either. Like that was when he was on the Lucas tour and racing pretty much every weekend. Um, now it's like, well, sometimes it's every other week. Sometimes it's once in two months. So I can kind of plan things around that. Say if like work, okay, I have options to plan a meeting this day, this day or this day. I'll try to plan it around races. That way I can kind of still go do what I want to do and, and yeah. do and balance both at least. But yeah, I missed one last year and it was kind of, it, um, I had booked a tour of Hendrick Motorsports with my marketing students. And so that was like a big deal. I booked it a few months in advance. Um, and then like two weeks before Kyle Larson was like, Hey, I think I want to add this race. And he told Kevin what race. And I'm like, that's the day I'm going to Hendrick. So I'm like, I can't, say, Hey, can I move this event just because I want to go to this race? Right. But it was just funny because I missed a race because I was at Hendrick and Kyle raced for Hendrick. Um, so, mm. but, but they didn't win. So I'm, I didn't have that much FOMO, but, um, still I was like, turn it out of all things. I had to miss it for this, but it was worth it because my students like getting that opportunity to go there, meeting the people they did, um, is very helpful for them, right? Uh, especially if they take me up on the offer and, and actually utilize the resources that they have available. Mm -hmm. So I try to go to the mall. <laughs> okay, all right, so what would you say then? Say you're racing Saturday, 
like both weekends like what would you say is it like what does a normal week look like for you you know what are you've got work regular work yeah. regular quote unquote regular work yeah but then Big you job. also have you also have duties for like kevin and home and the team putting food on the table you know like what does that look like for oh, you? yeah well, putting food on the table. Last night we got home from a test and I had to cook dinner at 1145. So yeah. Um, okay, so say we're eight hours away. So we'll get home a Sunday early afternoon. Kevin doesn't like driving all night because it's just him usually that drives. And I mean, he's not getting any younger, right? Plus it's like dangerous and, and dear and he worked all day. It's just not worth it because all we'll do is if we drive all night, then we'll just sleep all day anyway. So we usually maybe drive a couple hours or just stay at the track, get a good night's sleep, head home, maybe get home two, three o'clock in the afternoon. That's when, well, we end up at the shop. So that's 10 minutes from the house. Um, I'll probably clean out all the food that's going to go bad if hopefully there's none, but you know, um, get all the laundry, figure, get all that in my car, come home, start laundry, figure out groceries for the week. Cause it's like, okay, if he's going to be depending on what he's going to be doing, right? If he's going to be gone, then I don't necessarily have to get lunch stuff for him. I just get lunch stuff for me or what days are we going to be home for dinner? Because like if, say if people are coming to Longhorn or something, a lot of the times we'll go out to eat with people because um, we try to be social when people are in town. Um, so it all depends on like groceries and stuff. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I usually go to work. Um, I, I primarily teach online, right? But, and I don't have any set days or times that they have to like do a situation like this. I don't have them do any live things. So it's like, which is, I think works out good for them. I, I know it, um, engagement kind of goes down a little bit because it's like, I don't really know them very well. Um, but at the same time, I have students who work all day and do classes at night or have two jobs or they're still in high school. So some work at it like on Monday nights and some wait till Sunday to work on it. Um, so basically Mondays, Tuesdays, I make sure my curriculum is up to date. Um, grading, answer emails, meetings, whatever. Um, and then I usually go like Wednesday and or Thursday, like today's Wednesday, I'll, I'm working from home today. I was just doing some webinars all morning. Um, and it depends on if there's say students coming to um, the campus for tours, like prospective students, it kind of depends. So I have to make sure I have basically Monday through Thursday at least open for school stuff. And then I kind of fill in everything in between. So um, like in the evenings, I'll probably, take all the laundry up to the truck one day. Cause like my car's not very big. So it basically comforters and, and all the blankets, that's enough. And then I have to do another load of clothes. Cause I have to do, of course, all Kevin's clothes, my clothes and depends on where we're going. Like this weekend it's Ohio and it's going to be cold, I'm sure. Um, mm -hmm. But basically in the motorhome, I have like motorhome clothes. So it's like, I just wash them and put them right back in. And I don't like, it's funny. People see me at a racetrack and they see me like away from the racetrack and it's a completely different wardrobe. <laughs> like I don't even wear jeans at home. <laughs> like I'm wearing dresses or work clothes. <laughs> and then at the racetrack, it's only jeans and jean shorts and racing t-shirts, right? And hoodies. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even think I have any hoodies here. So I have to do all the laundry. Um, depends on if we tore anything up <laughs> in terms of graphics. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I didn't design the wrap originally. Um, some guy that, not some guy, but uh, a friend who works at, who works at RFK racing now, he does all their graphic design. Uh, he designed our wrap, I guess it was at the beginning of last year, year before we've been using the same one, but I'm good enough to at least go in and edit it when I need to <laughs> like change stuff around. I, I can't start from scratch, but I can edit. Um, so I will make any edits if necessary, because things change quickly or just send in an order. Um, our printer, our graphic printer, she's in Mooresville and she's actually really close to Longhorn. So it kind of works out. I used to have to go like up all the way up to Winston-Salem to, to pick stuff up for Kevin. That's like an hour each way. And I'm like, I don't have time. So this new place, it's perfect because our one crew guy, uh, our tire guy, he's also a Longhorn employee. He's the main welder there. And it's like the graphic place is like seven minutes away. So after work, I'll be like, can you, can you go over there and grab some graphics for me, please? So that's one less trip I have to do. So he'll go grab the graphics. Our, our graphic lady's awesome. She can print stuff in, in a day if we need it. Um, wow. So that, I mean, it's, yeah, especially like this week, for example, we had to get some numbers printed. I sent it to her Friday. We picked it up Monday. Like you can't ask for better service, right? Because, you know, some things take a while. Um, and then in between all that, I'll try to fulfill merchandise orders. If anybody's watching this that has put in an order lately, I'm sorry. <laughs> Been slacking a little bit. So I got into a predicament. So we don't have a merchandise trailer or anything. So I have like this little little shed where I do like my patch hats and all my little stuff. It's like a she shed up in my, it's actually technically my front yard because we're lakefront. So it's, it's up against the road. Anyway, um, 
it has heating we just got heat and like electricity in there so i just go out in there and anyway um that's where i have all my apparel well i also split that up and i have like a tub i keep in the motorhome well the motorhome was just in for repairs for the last like month and some of these orders that came in that stuff is in that tub so luck so today i'm going to go to the motorhome and get grab some of that stuff so i can fulfill some orders because i've been slacking on that part a little bit um so then i'll do that and then what else do i have to do um kevin will come home i have to cook dinner whatever um and then usually we'll head out thursday night friday because most of the time we're racing if, if we are racing it's usually friday saturday um so oh i forgot i have to clean the motorhome forgot about that part clean the motorhome because i got a laundry out right clean the motorhome put it all back in i i'll go through it like i have this system where i do a walmart pickup order because for one we don't have many options where we live we have two grocery stores so i can't go to Publix and get some cool stuff it's walmart or food lion but i'll go through the motorhome like with my phone and like do inventory okay like we're out of ketchup because like the ketchup for some reason always ends up in the shop so we go to the races and Kevin's like, where's the ketchup? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, oh, I used it that one day and didn't put it back in. I'm like, mm. so I always have to keep like double the ketchup, <laughs> stuff like that, that you learn. And then like, depends on who goes with us. Sometimes it's just me and Kevin. If we're like, cause he'll still go to a lot of events that we're not racing. And I'll still go to those too, if I can, um, just to help Longhorn or Bill Stein customers. And then if we are racing though, then we'll have crew people with us. So get groceries that I know they like. Uh, and there's sometimes one, two or three of them, um, make sure that they're happy, make sure that there's enough drinks and, and all that kind of stuff. And then once we get on the road, I'm, I'm kind of off. <laughs> it's like my little vacation time at, at the racetrack. I don't really have many duties. Just make sure the fridge is stocked with drinks. I guess I can, I cook once in a while. Um, if they're usually I make sure there's just like sandwiches and stuff. I don't go all out unless it's like cold, then I might make chili or something like that. Um, my only really race day job is, I, at least if with Kyle, I record every time he's on the track, just with my phone, like just this videographer and then like lineups and stuff like that. Other than that, I'm kind of off. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to learn. Well, I don't want to refuse to learn, but like, I don't do tires. Like I know you, you work on it. I'm like, you know what? I know my place because I know Kevin, just like driving the motor home. I, I probably could learn, but like, I don't want to, cause then I know I'm going to have to drive it all the time. Yes. So that's what I, um, like Melanie Larson with Brent Larson, they, yeah. she does all his tires and I'm like, girl, why, why did you learn to do that? Like, I, like, yeah. like good for you. But like, I, I, no. I, I work all week. I work all night. Like I go to the racetrack. That's my, like, I get to go socialize and hang out with my friends <laughs> and watch races. Cause I love watch. I love racing. Right. Um, like that's why, like, I don't want a souvenir trailer. I like, I've been offered to work, help to we're on people's souvenir trailers. I'm like, I, thanks, but I, I'm, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. And that's something I kind of tell my students too. Like you can work in the industry a nine to five and still have the weekends to enjoy it. Because what I found, um, at least when I was at racing electronics, there was a lot of like, like diehard race fans, like NASCAR fans that would get jobs. And then they ended up kind of hating it and like resenting it because they were working through the races and they didn't get to watch the races versus there's a balance you can still work in the industry and then go enjoy what you like too because there's so many different types of racing too right so it's like i know a lot of people um some of the bill stein employees for example they used to be a the wrong guy used to be a crew guy on a dirt model well now he's a bill stein employee and basically works i don't know about their hours nine to five whatever and then on the weekends he can go and just help people and, and go and or just go watch if he wants he doesn't have to work in the industry are you enjoying this episode want even more or want a closer connection to the dtu fam join us over in club dtu where you'll receive early access to all of our podcasts live race day updates exclusive content special merchandise discounts, a community chat, personal recognition, and so much more. All inside one place, Club DTU. Um, and that's kind of where I am. I don't necessarily want to work while I'm there. I don't mind doing a little bit. I talk to people and whatever, but I don't want to be sitting in a souvenir trailer when I really just want to be there to watch the races, right? Because I enjoy watching. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that's, me to a T is well, my brother and my dad. I've seen it hand in, like my last 30 some years. I've watched it firsthand and my husband's like, oh, well you can. And I'm like, I just, I really don't want to. And he's like, but I know you can. And I'm like, that's the problem. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Like I'll, I'll wipe down the car once in a while. If I notice like nobody's doing it and I'm like, crap. <laughs> yeah, so gotta do it. Yeah. I'll, I'll like go get like the, the, you know, like the skirt we put on the back. Like if, 
some if Kyle comes in and nobody else is around, I'm like, crap, okay, where is this thing? I got to cover the rear end, right? <laughs> you know you've been in it long enough. You know yeah. what needs to get done. You can almost, like, it's like you're, like, the, I don't know if it's, like, the floorman, but, like, you're the overseer. Yeah, yeah the manager. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm, yeah. I love that. So, okay. Yeah. So like, honestly, anybody go to the driver's meeting? Like, come on, somebody go. Yeah, let's go, let's go. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, you grew up, like, racing mm. since you were born. Yeah, but I'm sensing you might not. But I do have to ask: Do you do you ever get tired? In a sense, like you guys are out to dinner, you're on vacation. You know, yeah. Kevin's on the phone. Kevin's gotta drop everything. Like you had plans. Yeah. Things get moved around. Like yeah, how, how do you handle that? It it Tell yeah, I can get a little frustrating because like he's always on call, right? So it's like in the summer, um, like we we go we have this like little routine if, if we're home we go for a little boat ride because we're like front so we just do this like sunset cruise takes about an hour um and like every time he gets a phone call and it's like gotta stop the music and he always talks on speakerphone too so i'm like sitting there like this is not my relaxing boat ride you know um and yeah like it's hard because i i love it but at the same time i really like travel and i like i like being social when I want to be right. Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like we don't get to go do a lot of stuff. Like we don't get to, we don't go to concerts. We don't go to wine tasting events. We don't go to, on weekend trips just to a casino and stuff like that. Cause if we're home, we want to be home really. Well, he wants to be home <laughs> or, and not even because if we're home, he's like, every, I, we joke like every day is the same for, for him at least. Like he gets up in the morning and goes to shop or goes to Longhorn or goes whatever. So if, if it's a Saturday or Sunday, he's at the shop all day, whether we're racing next week or not, he still has stuff to do. So it's like, we don't have weekends like most people, which is, I'm not complaining. Cause it's like, we're lucky to be able to do that. But at the same time, I like have like Facebook friends who have like kids, which I don't want kids, but they have kids and they're always going to do something on the weekends and it's cute. Like, oh, they went to this cute little brunch thing or they went to this fair or this park. And I'm like sitting here like, sitting by, by myself like all right well mm. <laughs> so yeah it gets a little hard but that's why we just planned the, that trip that we just got back from hawaii last week we've never been anywhere like that we've been to dominican like twice and that's just like a you know you just go and sit on the resort this was like an actual like adventure we went for 10 days um and we planned it in march because we knew that there wouldn't be any races because there's mm -hmm. never any races the first week of march but right the weekend before is when um they added that Deuces Wild, the uh, Kyle's High Limit Race, and the Lucas Race to Golden Isles. That was, that was like booked after our trip. So we were like, oh great, like we'd already booked our trip, and then that got. So we literally, Kevin was in Speed Weeks for about five weeks. He came home from Volusia, had four days to turn around to get the car ready because he hadn't touched it since Vado, New Mexico. Because as soon as we got back from Vado, he went to Florida, and he was gone to Florida the whole time came back from Volusia. We left Volusia early, so that's when I saw you for like two days because yeah. I drove down tuesday and we left friday morning um because he had to get home because he had to work saturday sunday monday tuesday to leave wednesday to come back down to golden isles so then we got back from there sunday had to take the motor home in to get fixed monday and we left for hawaii tuesday so it's like i enjoyed the vacation but i like it, it's just been so chaos like i don't know if i fully got to enjoy it because like i it was just chaos getting ready my like packing and like it was just busy. It was overwhelming. <laughs> and then got back last week, which has been trying to catch up and then here we're going racing again. So yeah, it's hard. It, it, it requires a lot of balancing. Um, and yeah, like I kind of miss the old, like, Oh, just nine to five and leave it at home, leave it at work and you get your evenings. Um, but at the same time, that wasn't challenging. Right. And it wasn't near as fun. So, I mean, it's all balance. <laughs> it's worth it. I think at the end of the day. <laughs> so, okay. So, most times you do go to the races with Kevin, but are there yeah. times when you go a week without seeing each other? Oh yeah. Like, um, when he was just in Florida, he, usually it's no more than about two weeks, but, um, yeah, like when he was in Florida, I was like, I can't come to all of them. So I, we, Golden Isles won because <laughs> we went there twice. Golden Isles won. I drove my car down and came back and then I stayed home and I missed, um, all tech and Bubba. So that I didn't see him for like 10 days. Cause then I flew back into East Bay the following Wednesday. So I was home for like 10 days and I did not know what to do with myself because we're always together. Like we yeah. we're always together. Cause like we're traveling, like we're at home. Like I stop by the shop probably every day just to drop something off or pick something up. Like we're always together, um, which is cute. Cause it's like, we're best friends. So it's like, Oh, but then I was home alone for 10 days. And I'm like, this is wild. I guess I haven't 
experienced that probably since my old job, like five years ago. Um, yeah. So it was kind of weird be because I didn't, I don't want to say I didn't make it an effort to, I probably could have went if we were racing, I would have went, but since he was just down there doing his consulting stuff, I'm like, eh, I can miss it. But then like when the time time come and I'm like sitting there on Friday night, watching it on TV, I'm like, I wish I was there. <laughs> so yeah, once in a while, like, um, in the summer, I try to go back to Canada for like a week or so in the summer. And I try to plan it where I can go watch my nephew races now, go-karts. So I try to plan it so I can go watch him. And hopefully it's like when Kevin's gone too, that way, like he's not sitting at home without me because he's the same way. Like, I don't know what to do with myself if we're home alone. <laughs> but yeah, usually it's only about a week or so without each other. Sometimes he'll fly in or out, but normally if he takes the motor home, he like wants me to come just for company too. And to navigate, he's not very okay. good at navigating. <laughs> okay so it sounds like you actually thrive on the traveling yeah probably yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, yeah i like going to all these different places but i mean yeah it's like people are like oh you're so lucky you get to go to all these places i'm like well i get to go to like small like chillicothe ohio like it's not like i'm going to new york city every weekend yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> like we're trapped in the motor home eating like sandwiches and pizza rolls like I don't have a car. People are like, oh, you should go try this restaurant. I'm like, I don't even have a car. Like, we, once you park, like, you're not moving. <laughs> like, that's even like the sprint car people don't even understand that, right? Because they all like they leave every night. Like when we had that that combo race, it's like they couldn't load up fast enough. We're all watching them and like, like we're our car still unloaded. I got a beverage in my hand and watching them like leave to go to the hotel, even though they're coming right back tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's just weird. It's different. It's culturally depending on the type of racing too. It's all different. Yeah. Oh, I, oh my God. Absolutely. So that has me wondering, like, crew wise, like, do mm -hmm. do they ours travel is, with you? Yeah, ours is a little different since we don't race full time. Um, we had a full time crew guy for a while that didn't really work out. So we've just been kind of like having the Longhorn employee. So Steve Arpin, that's who owns Longhorn now. He's pretty flexible with allowing Kevin the. His name's Kevin too. We call him little Kevin, um, little Kevin come with us when he can. Um, like he doesn't want him gone for a week because obviously that would hurt Longhorn's productivity. Right. Cause yeah. I don't know how many chassis he welds a week, but more than not be in there. Right. Um, so he's pretty flexible with letting him come with us. And then we have another kid who is a senior at UNCC in mechanical engineering, which is the program that Kevin took. Um, so he's in the mechanical engineering motorsports program and he used to race modifieds out like Fairbury area and stuff. And we got hooked up with him through a guy at Longhorn that know, knew him. Um, so he comes on the weekends. He's like, I mean, engineering's difficult. So he's, I think he takes like five classes. So like during the week, he's like, I'm too busy, but um, on the weekends he'll he come up and help Kevin. And so he can come this weekend too. So we actually can't leave until he's out of school tomorrow, tomorrow evening, um, or else we put it probably would have left earlier. So we're going to wait till tomorrow evening to leave. So we're taking him and the Longhorn guy. Sometimes it's only one of them. Um, and it, it, sometimes like we've been to a couple races where it's, well, usually it's only like practice night, but, and it's just like me, Kevin, and then Dave, who's our um, shop owner sponsor. It's like that D&E Marine that's on the nose. He's like an older guy. He, he can help, but it's still not a crew guy. So sometimes it's like us three and Kevin's over there doing tires. And I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> this is chaos. Bad thing you see him doing yeah. tires. Yeah, but yeah, so so most of the time it's two guys that travel with us. Um, and I've, I've known little Kevin, Kevin King forever. He used to help Justin Labonte back when he raced 10 years ago out of the old Longhorn shop and stuff. So we all get along really good, but it is difficult because it's, you know, it's one motor home, one bathroom. <laughs> so it's like you get in each other's way, but for us, it's, it's a weekend. It's not like we're um, three weeks on the road together either. Yeah. Um, that doesn't really happen often. So it's not too bad. And our motor home's pretty big. It's like, we're lucky. We have one that has like a bedroom and bunk beds. So it's like, you kind of have your own space. It's not like you're sleeping on a couch in, in front of everybody, like a lot of them. So it, it works pretty good. We all get along. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. what's it been like, I mean, for the listeners, you know, uh, having Kyle Larson in your car. I mean, I think that's pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty right. Fun. Like, so at first it's like when it first happened in 2020, it was like, a Kevin, like we're, we're sitting in the hot tub, usually where good of our good ideas come from. Right. Like wonder if he would be interested in trying a late model. Cause like he wasn't doing anything. And, and of course we have some mutual friends just cause of where we're at. Um, mm -hmm. and someone sent him a message and he responded. He's like, yeah, I'd like to try it and went testing. And I'm like, intimidated right like i'm around nascar people but at the same time like i'm like still you get nervous so it's yeah. like it's pretty cool um and then like over the years it's now it's like normal right like like 
it, he's just he's just like everybody else really um he's pretty laid back he's fun to be around um he always he, he loves like the late model drama he'll be like so what's new if <laughs> so like kevin's been texting him a lot this week keeping him updated oh, yeah. <laughs> he loves it he loves it so it's like it's cool because it's like when we see him sometimes it's like we go six months without seeing him i think that's what it was this year like we raced with him in june and we didn't race again until july or not july January. Yeah. <laughs> June to like, January. Hey, girlfriend, that's like a yeah, month. Yeah, that's, that's a month, yeah. Um, so we didn't see him for a long time. So I was like trying to, he was like, so what's been happening? I'm like trying to think like, oh crap, what happened last summer? I'm trying to think back that far. Um, but um, Kevin talks to him a lot. Um, but it's been pretty cool. And like, and even for my work side of things, like I was involved in the NASCAR industry to a point in terms of like with the marketing companies and stuff like that, but not with the drivers and necessarily teams directly. So even working with his manager a little bit which is actually cool because his manager used to work at one of the marketing companies that i used to work with so i knew him from my old job and then now i see him in this role um, as his manager pr guy whatever um, he kind of does everything he also kind of runs a lot of the high limit stuff um, so it's been i think helpful for me too in terms of my my teaching and and getting more of a um industry knowledge and and kind of like like i'm like I'm like right in there, right? So I kind of see how everything works. Like I've never really been around licensing and, and getting like permissions to do stuff and, and all that kind of merchandising and learning how the NASCAR world works in terms of that. Like they have like five different organizations that they need permission to do a t-shirt, right? Oh, like it's, just, yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, our world doesn't work like that. People just do stuff and don't ask permission. <laughs> Yeah. 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 So yeah, it's been cool. It's been fun. Um, the kids he'll like, sometimes like he'll show up at the races and bring this is before Cooper. He'll just bring, um, Audrey or Owen or both. And like, they just sit in the trailer or they go up in the motorhome. They're like stuff, like they're like racing kids. Like he'll go out to qualify and like both the kids are there. I'm like, Oh, uh, okay. Like crap. Like you guys want to go watch and they'll be like, oh, we're good here. I'm like, okay. And they just stay there. Like they don't, or it's like, has anyone seen Owen? And it's like, he's off somewhere. He'll come back. Like, they're just racing kids. This is like us as a kid, right? Like we're gone for the night playing with our friends and eventually we'll come back. We know where to go. Exactly. That's kind of how, that's how they are. It's like, it's, they're just, that's, that's all they know. So it's pretty cool. It's fun. We're racing with him again in April. So it'll be, okay. it's always fun to catch up and yeah. yeah. I love that. So, okay. Going off of that, that has me thinking okay. like a little bit of a, of a deeper question. Okay. How do you feel? Like, how do you feel? How do you react? Like when things don't go Kevin's way, you know, like I, I when, uh, what was it? They banned the device. If you oh, know. oh, that and, was and what, whatever is going on now. Like, yeah. how do you, how do you help Kevin? Like, I, I don't know how Kevin is, you know, like I know yeah. how my husband is and my brother, my, my father, like I know how to an extent, how to help them like through that. Yeah. Does Kevin get upset? Like, how do you help him? He, it, it can be one or the other. <laughs> He's pretty laid back unless it's like you, you trigger him. And then it's like, ugh, I'm like, should you send that text message? Are you sure? Think Maybe about it. just wait till tomorrow. Um, he can get a little, yeah, <laughs> but, um, he, he can be a little irrational, but most of the time, like, I mean, I'm on his side because it's a rational thought. It's just maybe his way of expressing it <laughs> sometimes isn't, but usually, I mean, like he's not, he's not a dumb guy. He's pretty smart. Right. So most of the time he is right. Um, it, it, some people, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm biased, but some people might not want to admit that sometimes and sometimes whatever, but like he is pretty smart. So it's like, normally if he has a train of thought and like an opinion or, or facts about something, he's probably right. Um, I think sometimes some don't want to listen to him or think that he's being unbiased because he can actually be very, very unbiased if it's like factual. I think that's the engineering in him. Like he can look at data and this and be like, well, why are you coming to that conclusion? That's not true. Um, and it, because you know, racing politics, all this kind of stuff. So you don't know who's chirping in this year. You don't know who's telling this person this and like, do I, well, I don't want to be offensive, but like, he does have education. He does have a degree, right? So he, he kind of knows what he's talking about. And some of these people maybe making rules are just listening to hearsay or what they think instead of it being like an actual, like what's like the scientific process behind this? Is this legit? Um, so he can get a little frustrated. <laughs> so uh, for me, I'm just kind of like, I try to talk him off a ledge a little bit. I'm like, okay, well, let's think about this and let's, let's get all the facts. Let's call Steve with, Longhorn or Aaron at Bill's time. Let's, let's all come together before we just like freak out. Um, mm -hmm. 
get other people's opinions and, and take some time and think about it. But um, yeah, I'm, I try. <laughs> I can only do so much. It's never true. I'm supportive. Okay. But even if he's going crazy, I'll be like, okay, well, I still love you. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. That is so yeah. true. Yeah. So, okay. I am curious. You, you kind of like walked around it. We don't have to like, you know. Oh, the device the part? Here. What's that? The, the device, is that what you're about to say? No, 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 no. We, don't, we don't need to discuss that. Um, <laughs> that works, I'm, I'm curious, like, I know, like, from the sprint cars, the modified world, like, I've never really hung out with the late models. So <laughs> what is the vibe? Like, what's the camaraderie there? Are anytime, there hang out anytime. It's a good time. I think that's why Kyle likes it so much, because he's like, like, because we all just, well, most of us, and you know, it's like, there's, there's going to be clicks. Like there's, it's clicky, right? Yeah. Chassis manufacturers or whatever. Well, I'll hang out. I don't care. I don't, it, that's, I, it, well, the, the chassis people don't pay my bills. Well, they kind of do, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I, you can talk to whoever, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, it's, it's, I think it's fun. Like, that's like the best part of going is just being able to hang out. Heck, half the time, like, especially like speed weeks when we weren't racing and it was cold, I watched, I watched the races from the motorhome and then I go out after. <laughs> Because it's cold. I go out when it's time to be social. So yeah, we all. I feel like it's probably like modified. Yeah, from hanging around T Mac and stuff, I feel like he knows modified, right? And I feel like late model modified are probably pretty similar. Uh, we all kind of just hang out and go. Like you always run into the same people because like the same people have the same lifestyles. Like some just go to bed after, which is good for them. They probably like mm -hmm. I probably should too. Um, <laughs> but then there's others that just kind of hang out all night and like at Vado. Um, so we have just a one car trailer, right? We don't have a stacker. So a lot of people have like, they'll load up and then they can hang out underneath the lift gate or in the trailer. Well, we can't do that. Cause if like, once everything's in our trailer, like you can't move it, you can't even get in there. Um, so like Vado, for example, um, we left the tra the car out till it was at least midnight. Cause everybody was inside of our trailer hanging out, like just sitting on the ramps, just hanging out. And it was funny cause um, it was really cold. So we were all in there and we have like a, a little heater blowing on us and it was okay. but. Um, it was about to rain, but it was cold enough where it was going to snow. So Kevin's like, I'm going to leave the car out because I want to see snow on the race car. So it was like midnight. And next thing you know, it starts snowing in the middle of the desert and like got some video and some snow on the race car. And then it, once that was finally done, then we loaded up and went to bed. But yeah, we all just kind of hang out. It's fun. Like we all have, everyone says hi to each other and whatever. There's a few that, you know, don't maybe get along and park on opposite ends, but you're going to have that everywhere. Right. Yeah. It's, it, I mean, it's competitive. Like you are competitors. Um, and like, say yeah if there's a bad night where somebody gets into somebody they might not talk that day but the next day they'll be fine like it's it's racing um so it's like and like we have i have friends who've switched off of longhorn and they're still my friend like i'll still go hang out like it doesn't mm -hmm. that's business like like we're all friends it's that's just that doesn't matter like i would rather them be in the longhorn but <laughs> but at the same time like it's okay like that's cool like doesn't matter like we're still friends like it our friendship is not based off of what chassis you are and if it is then we probably weren't actually friends um because like yeah, so it's like um, like we have the boat, right? So in the summer, like people like come to the shop or whatever, and like we'll take people out on the boat and go to dinner because there's a restaurant and stuff. And like people are like, "Wow, you do that with like your racing friends?" It's like, well, yeah, they're our friends. Like that's like really our only friends, right? Like we don't it's have friends outside of racing. Yeah, we don't have friends outside of racing. Like that's what I said. Like when I was home for that ten days in February, I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself because like I have some friends from college that are like married and have kids and it takes like a month to plan to like hang out with them. Like, I just can't call somebody and be like, Hey, you want to go to lunch? But like at the racetrack, it's like, you just stop and talk to people, you know, where they're at, you know, whose trailer you can just walk right into and, and hang out for hours or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's fun. I think it's fun. That's probably why I enjoy it so much. I just like the camaraderie and the social aspect and the racing. <laughs> now, are there, I mean, are there a lot of like girlfriends and wives that travel on, on the streets? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, a lot of the girlfriends and wives, like probably like sprint car stuff, they run the merchandise. Um, that's okay. kind of some of them like do have like a work from home job, but I would say the ones who do work the merchandise, like that's kind of their job. So basically, the merchandise makes up for them not having a job, right? So like, well, it is their job. So they run the merchandise, but that's kind of their income. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I mean, some people do make a lot of money, but. It, it's not, you're not going to become a millionaire by selling merchandise, right? It basically kind of helps pay the bills. So like it will help that driver's wife or fiance or girlfriend, whatever, be able to travel with them versus having to stay home and never seeing them and making the same amount and having to stay at home. Um, that's what makes sense. Yeah. So that's what a lot of them do. 
But there are some who like work from home. Like Stacy Marler, for example, she's a high school teacher, but she's virtual. Oh. But she's not like me. She has to actually be on on certain dates, like at certain times of the day. Um, so it's like the poor girl, she'll be like at a truck stop at 8 a.m. They had to pull over so she could teach a class. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know about that. But um, so it, it's hard for a lot of them because she doesn't run merchandise. She does the, the high school. So she's like, I'm like, do you want to like when we were in Vaudeville, I'm like, do you want to go for the lunch? She's like, I'm working till three. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> like I can like I can work all morning and kind of take some time off and then go like I can work until seven eight o'clock if I'm watching the race right like I can yeah. I have the flexibility but some don't so okay, okay. yeah oh totally random this is okay. extremely random but I've always noticed you always do like play by play updates on Twitter or sorry it's X oh yeah I think Whatever. that started as like a like a nervous like coping mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because it's like I look down half the time, so it's like I don't know. It just kind of it started organically, like like when I think probably when Steve Shaver or Davenport was in Kevin's car like ten years ago, if not more. And yeah. then I just kind of continued it, and then it's like, and then when Kyle came, of course my follower blew up. Um, yeah. And I don't necessarily like I, I as I as you get older, you get a little more wise. So when I talk about Kevin, like would have his blow ups, like I could get on Twitter too once in a while and get a little feisty. But I've been pretty good lately, I think. I mean, I'm growing up a little bit. <laughs> I have, well, and when you have like a, a larger audience, it makes you kind of think a little more about what you say, right? If you have like 20 followers, you're like, eh, nobody's reading it. Now it's like, oh, I need to watch my mouth a little bit. <laughs> that is me though. I mean, like there's yeah. so many times when I want to voice something and then I, yeah. I type it up, yeah. I sit there and I'm like, like what positive would come of this? That's what Kevin tries to tell me. When, when he's being rational, he's like, what positive will that do? And I'm like, nothing. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I, I try to do updates and stuff because in, and kind of when I first started, it was before pay-per-view and it was before even not all races were on timing and scoring. Um, so it was kind of like a way people could go and, and check like what happened last night if they didn't have, if they didn't have access to the live or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of just touched on it is like people voicing their opinions. Like what's your two cents on that? Obviously you're, you have a good head on your shoulders. You understand like the pros and cons of it, but like yeah. other drivers getting on social media and staying stuff. Like what is your take? Uh, I don't know. It kind of depends on the situation. I think like sometimes um, silence is better. Um, I also think about that like being authentic is really important. Um, so like kind of the same, but not really like, I don't like it. A pet peeve of mine is when you know it's somebody else running someone's social medias, but they don't like say it is right. So it's like, it, it's just not organic to me because people, especially X, like Facebook, it's a little more acceptable, but like X people want to engage, right? Like that's where they know that they can reach that person. And when they know it's not actually that person, like they're not gonna respond and stuff like that. Um, and then, the, Twofold to that is when somebody gets way too um, open or, or way too, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Just, I don't want to say aggressive, but like, yeah, when someone starts stirring crap online, that's when it's like, okay, like that's unprofessional. Um, maybe you should contact like the people behind the scenes. Like if, if it gets to the point where that's not working, then okay, sometimes it does require putting it publicly. Um, but I don't know, there's a fine line. And I like, even for me, when people like say we have controversy, say Kyle took somebody out, I don't know. Um, people like they come at me, I'm like, I didn't drive. I'm, I'm not driving. Like, that's not. Sorry, but you can go talk to him. Like, I'm not. I got. I mean, if he did, I'd be like, oh well, yeah, he did. Like, but I'm not gonna apologize for it or say he's a bad person or anything. Like, people just get like out of control. Um, yeah. And it's like, or when people like, I get a lot of people like um, message me about like Kyle's schedule, for example, and then they get mad when I don't respond, but. With Kyle, it's like, there's, you have to, it, like, if, say we announced we were going to Atomic this weekend, um, and he didn't show up, it's going to make a lot of people mad, uh, because his schedule is always changing. So we have a schedule, and it might change, like, that day, or that hour, right before, right? Like, yeah. we might be there, and he ends up not coming, because he, his plane broke down, or whatever. Um, so, like, I, we don't advertise when he's racing for the most part and some people get like really aggravated because they're like i was only an hour away i would have been there and i'm thinking i'm thinking well if you're a race fan you would have went anyway whether he was there or not i don't say it sometimes i do but i shouldn't because then i feel bad because then it's like well i'm 
I don't have much money or to be able to go. I'm like, oh crap. See, I shouldn't have said that. So that that's something you're like, I shouldn't have said that. Um, so like I do get a lot of, I don't want to say hate, but I get a lot of people who are like offended. Even even sometimes it's like not necessarily like friends, but like say social media acquaintances, people I talk to once in a while. Um, if they ask me and I don't respond or I just because like most of the time if I don't respond, that, that should be a hint like yes, we probably are going because most of the time, if we're not, I'll say no. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want that to come on me either. I don't want that to be my fault that people showed up at a race or whatever. So I get a little bit of negativity for that sometimes, but for the most yeah. part, for the most part, people leave me alone for now. Good. Until I say something, I probably shouldn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you want to say? I'm just kidding when I yeah. hear you do that. No, I'm, hey, what's that saying? Like, not my clown, not my circus this week? Not nothing. my circus, not my not, monkeys. Okay, not okay. Monkeys. Yeah, that's it. I had it reversed, whatever. Yes, yeah, like the tire stuff and stuff. I'm like, I don't know. Not, I, I don't, I have, didn't even read the articles. I don't know anything. I'm staying out of it. Not my problem. <laughs> like, unless it becomes your problem. Like, if it's yes, not, yes. It's not unless the drama problem. is about, yeah, unless the drama is about me, I really don't care. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to. Yeah. Focus on everything else I have going on. I'm I don't have time to read through Facebook comments or watch stuff or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. stay in my it's, own little world. <laughs> it's peace of mind that way. I, I, I hate to say it, but it's almost like ignorance is bliss. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Like that's like with everything. I don't even watch the news. I don't know. My mom tells me like what's happening in the U.S. politics. I'm like, I have no idea. I don't pay attention. Mine too. It's not affecting my current life, so <laughs> I can't vote anyway. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> True. Yeah, so I'm not true. a citizen, so I'm like, eh. <laughs> I could get it, but that's like really the only benefit is so I'm like, eh. Closing out, I want to ask what, like, it can be late models, it can be overall racing as a whole. What do you feel is something like our sport could improve upon? I battle with that because it's like, I think that it could be a little more professional and taking, taken a lot more seriously. Um, but then I don't want it to turn into NASCAR, NASCAR, right? <laughs> Where it's all like, you don't have access to drivers. You don't have access like to even like call a driver. You have to talk to their PR person. You, the sponsor barely doesn't even know the driver. It's like some third party out here trying to find them and like hook them up and, and then ticket prices are crazy. And then the cars are all the same and stuff like that. But I do think a little bit more professionalism will go a long way. There's so many free tools out there, right? Like, um, doing like this, like a podcast or whatever, like actually utilizing their social media and not necessarily having to hire somebody like not full time, but like maybe like pay a photographer to come to a few races like every couple weeks. That way you can have some content to make some stuff um, like some images or or like hero cards, like hero cards are even like a fallen thing, like a yeah. lot of people don't do them anymore right um so i think like a little more professionalism i think would go a long way in terms of getting like corporate money um but you just have to be careful because you don't want it to turn too corporate right mm -hmm. too corporate because there's so many opportunities for like b2b stuff and like hospitality and and all that and, and like this is what i teach in like my one marketing class i'm like the problem with most drivers especially on the grassroots level is it's like hey will you give me 500 dollars and i'll put your logo on my hood like it's not about that. It's about like, okay, what can you do for that brand? How, how do you connect with that brand? What do you have in common with that brand and what can you do for them? Right. Um, so, and I think that's, there's a lot of opportunity. It's just for one, it's hard to find the right person. Like I can say that all day long, but if you can't, if you find a brand that you think you have a good match with, you still might not get in. Like it's, you have to get into the right person. So it has to be through somebody, you know, something has to happen kind of organically for you to be able to even find the right deal. Um, but it's possible. It's just finding it. So I think there is an opportunity for like bigger corporate stuff because like dirtly model stuff's expensive. Like mm -hmm. our, like I said, like we can't race full time because we don't have the rig for it really. Like our motorhome isn't really meant to do what it's doing. So it's like, but the next step investment would be a million dollar rig. Like that's a big stepping stone from what we have now to that. Right. So it's like, you would need some sort of big time money to come do that. And I'm not saying that we're looking for it, but I mean, that's just what it would take. Um, and if not, like, I don't know if the sport will, I, I don't know what the future holds. Right. Because it's like, there's current drivers and there's new drivers coming in. Um, but Dirt Late Model, I think is 
um, a little more difficult than other forms of racing. So what happens sometimes is you get somebody with maybe a lot of money or a lot of backing and a lot of, um, they, they have a lot of motivation. They think they can do it. And then they get to the racetrack and race for six months or a year and miss every show and don't win. And then they get frustrated and they quit. Um, so that doesn't help the future of racing. Um, and that's a discussion that Kevin has once in a while. Like, okay, we need to make this easier for people. Like people think he just wants to make things difficult. He doesn't. He just, he, he's like, okay, we need to make this easier for entry level people to at least be able to compete um, and be competitive and mm -hmm. to help keep them in. And if to help keep them in requires a little more um, consulting from like someone like Kevin or something like that to get them started, then so be it. So yeah, it's kind of, it, there's, I don't know that there's no right or wrong answer, right? Cause it's like, nobody knows. Yeah. We'll find out. I like that though. That's like everyone's, we're, we are competing against yeah. each other, but mm -hmm. we need to come together to continue to grow our sport, make it better. Like right. I saw someone posting about, like, don't just post on social media saying like, Hey, if anyone wants to sponsor me, oh, it's awful. Like, no, no don't do that. <laughs> That's like the biggest, like the spot. If someone sees that, they're gonna be like, Oh, like yeah. when someone asks me for money, I don't want to give them money. I probably wanted to maybe give them money before you asked me. <laughs> Oh, you know the amount of people that ask me if me I want too. to sponsor them? I believe it. I get people that email, like, Kevin or, like, well, the race team. Like, hey, you want to sponsor us? I'm like, we're a race team. Like, yeah, race teams don't sponsor race teams unless you're, like, track house with NASCAR or something like that. But they're doing that for other reasons to, like, fill their amateur pool up, right? But, like, no. <laughs> Do you want to sponsor me? <laughs> or not me, but the race team? <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's, like, it, some people's perceptions, I think, are just off. So they yeah. should um, take your class. Yeah, if they want. Yeah, I my motorsports marketing class I have open to um, what we call continuing education students. So basically, it's anybody can just sign up. They don't have to go through the application process of like what the normal college students do. Um, so it's in session right now, and I only do it once a year. So it'll be next January, the next time I do it, hopefully. Um, but it's cool. I get a lot of like, I, I pretty much market it just on my socials. So I get a lot of grassroots people who just kind of want a little, like, I'm not saying that I'm going to get you a hundred thousand dollar sponsor or anything like that. It's more teaching you the tools to be able to try to do it and, and, and just brush up on some stuff and see where you can take that. Like try to give the skills for the people to be able to do it themselves and yeah. go from there. But yeah, that's offered every January through Rowan Cabarrus community college. I love it. Yeah, you yeah. have to be willing to put in the work and that's yeah. a great place to start. Yeah. And I get some who like, it's, cause it's a legit college class. Like they're in the class with my other degree seeking students and it's a, well, it's a 14 week semester. So like some people are like, Oh, that sounds fun. And they haven't done school in 15 years and they log in the first day and then they, they log in the second week. And then by the sixth week or something, they start like fizzling out because it's like, Oh, this is too much work or whatever. And, and or people get busy. It's whatever. Like it's a fun class. It's not going to hurt them. And I'm like, I tell them, I'm like, well, my, college students like they have to do all, every assignment right like they're gonna fail if they don't yeah. you like as a adult learner you can just focus on the on the um lessons that you want like say all you want to do is build a sponsorship deck just pay attention to that four weeks then you can ignore all the other stuff but yeah so yeah every january it's offered um it's 228 dollars, which is the same price as the college students pay i made sure to match it so that's i know yeah. yeah for what you want to get out of it that's nothing so amazing okay Jacqueline, I adore you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Good luck to you guys this season. Hopefully somewhere we cross paths. We must. Yeah, we must hey, come anywhere. hang out at the dirt track anytime. At, well, at the dirt late model race, I should say, anytime. Yeah. Not that you make it down this way much, but I'll, I'll see you in November at least, probably. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. before then. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Now we both have... Now I'm sure we both have a lot to do the rest of the day. Yes, hopefully, we do. Yours, hopefully yours isn't cleaning a motorhome. <laughs> like that. No, no, I'm we're yeah. in the clear there. So yeah. thank you yeah. and uh, really appreciate it. Everyone, if you liked it, please share it, tag us and girlfriend, we will see you at the races. So thank you, babe. Thanks. Bye.